Like most of you, cancer came into my life at an unforget in an unforgiving way, and changed everything I w <clears throat> and changed everything. I was a clean living athletic student. I thought I was doing all the right things. I didn't do drugs, and I did not smoke or drink. I was going through the normal struggles of a college student. Nothing out of the ordinary, just studying and hanging out with my friends. Okay. Then the headache started. At first the doctor said it was just the stress of college. But the headaches continued. They were excruciating and constant. But still the doctor said they were migraines and laid out a course of treatment for them. After several, several visits to a variety of doctors and walk-in clinics and the emergency rooms, my mother insisted that they um, do an MRI. And if you've ever experienced a mother with determination, <laughs> you know that that they were going to get their way. My mom was especially good at this, just ask my dad. <laughs> <laughs> the hospital emergency room doctor basically ordered the MRI to get us out of her hair and confirmed to us that the diagnosis of migraines was correct. In fact, her last words before I was wheeled to the MRI were, I am 100% sure it is migraines. I see this all the time in girls your age. That is when everything started happening. The whispers outside my room from my doctor to my parents. The word cancer was overheard by myself and my boyfriend Pete, who's standing here with me today. And um, immediate hospitalization, a seizure, a stroke, a coma, and partial blindness. A nurse taking my dad aside and asking him, if he was a religious person. Another nurse handing my dad and boyfriend a note with the words glioma cerebri and asking them to Google it. And the first words that they see are almost always fatal. Trips to the Mayo Clinic, Henry Ford Brain Tumor Clinic, along with radiation and chemotherapy. And of course, the perks that go along with the treatment, the wigs, the scarves, and the hat buying. The chauffeured rides and preferred par parking spots that a wheelchair entitles you to. And then there are the priceless benefits. The unconditional love and support of our community, friends and family. The prayer circles that grew to over 8,000 through social media. The compassion of strangers who blessed us with numerous donations, appeals, gifts, and acts of kindness. These actions started the next relay of my life, of my new life, that transformed a grim diagnosis into hope and determination to prove medical science wrong. I have exchanged my precancerous life for the next leg in this earthly race, and I am willing to take it head on. I also need to mention that when I woke Awoke from my coma, my boyfriend Pete asked me to marry him. <laughs> I'm happy to say that on August 8th of 2015, we will be getting married. I can also proudly stand here today and say even, through, even though the doctors and medical books said this cancer was 95% fatal, that the last two years my MRIs have shown no cancer and I am still here.